Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. And today I have a question about building software from scratch. This is a, a question I've gotten a lot of times from a lot of different people because this is something that is difficult to do when you're a beginner to figure out how could you ever ever do this. So this question comes from Akash and he says, hey John, your videos are great and I highly value your advice. One problem I face is that when it comes to building a big software, I cannot think of how to design the whole thing from scratch. Say how to break the whole thing into many subtasks and then implementing each subtask and putting them all together to make it work. It would be very nice of you if you can guide me on how to overcome this problem. Thanks in advance. So what I would say here, Akash, is that what you want to do is you want to, you want to think, instead of thinking about taking a whole system, right, this is kind of the top-down approach, breaking it down to all these pieces, assembling all these pieces and seeing how they fit together and building this massive transformer or Legos from this, these huge Legos, you want to think of software development more like evolution, okay? And what I mean by that is that start with something really simple, okay? Start with the simplest thing that could possibly work that doesn't have a lot of features and then evolve that into where you want to go instead of doing what, what they call big upfront design. And there's, it, it doesn't mean that you should never like think about the overall architecture of a thing and that you don't have to design certain things up front. And, but in a lot of cases, you don't have to do as much of it as, as you think you need. Now, if you're designing some software that is going to be embedded inside of a electronic device and a hardware engineer is going to have to develop the circuitry or a custom chip or something for that to, to work, you're probably going to have to design a lot of this stuff up front and, and you're probably going to have to do that. But, but you might even be limited there. But for most software that we're building today, especially web applications and things like that, or mobile applications, we could build something that is very, very basic and then evolve it, make changes to grow it and, and to add complexity as it's needed. And, and one thing, one reason why this is so important is because the bane of software development, one of the worst things in software development is complexity, right? This channel is called Simple Programmer. My, my business is about making the complex simple. Because that's what we need to do. Is, as software developers, one of your main jobs is to fight complexity. Because complexity comes into the system and it makes it difficult to maintain. It makes it difficult to understand. It, it makes it more likely to have bugs and to fail. And so we want to reduce the complexity as much as possible. We want to simplify. So we need to start as simple as possible. What is the simplest possible thing that could work? A lot of times in the entrepreneurial world, they call this an MVP or minimal viable product. So what can you do when you're trying to build a big software system, or what you can do, is that you can start really small. Start with a very, very small thing, right? You know, I've, I've, I'm trying to think of the book, but I read this really good book on something, I think it was Test Driven Development, Step by Step, or something like that, or, and, and in the book he was designing like a note, notepad app or something, and he started off with very, very, incremental he did this a very incremental way and he started off with I think his application needed a database but he started off with not having a database instead just like storing the data in text files that he read from the text files and then he got to this point where he needed to actually put it into a database and then he modified the program and made it read the same data except he created a, an abstraction to read from the database right and so that's the natural evolution of things, and that's how you can, you can build this complex software. I guarantee you most of the complex software that actually gets built today is, is built in, in this manner. It's, a lot of it is not designed all the way up front and then build all these pieces and hope, that they, and, hope and pray that they work. Otherwise, it ends up going way over budget and, and way over, over schedule, and that's, you know, that, unfortunately that does happen. But if you want to be successful, if you want to be able to do this, just start with something small. There's, there's nothing that is difficult in this world. There's nothing that is complex. It is only that it's, it's composed of a bunch of simple things that make it seem complex. So you can build the most complex architecture. You can build a, a huge thing, 
but you have to start with the simple. It's all composed of the simple. And instead of trying to just take all those pieces, just start, ev evolve the thing, start, build something. What is the smallest, simplest thing that you can put out that does anywhere close to the functionality and then start adding features. And as you add the features, then you add the architecture to support them and you create abstractions. Uh, a book that I'll recommend that would probably help you to do that is called Clean Code. It's one of my favorite books by Robert Martin. I definitely recommend that book, but you want to evolve your architecture. And then the other thing I would say about this is that as you evolve things, you're going to create abstractions to keep it simple, right? So that you don't ever have this huge, huge complexity. And sometimes it might even be rewriting the, the entire thing or rewriting parts of it, but that's fine. That's how, how the evolution of software works. It's better than, than adding complexity. A lot of time, software developers want to prematurely optimize. They want to make things extremely flexible. They're doing premature optimization on the software because they're, they're trying to build this very, very robust system. And that often fails because we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what we're going to need. So it's better to not try and anticipate it, but just to say, okay, now I need to add this new feature or make this work in this way. How can I evolve it? And remember, software development, it's, it's not like a bridge. It's not like you've got concrete laid and now you're going to change the architecture of the house. Software is, is malleable. It's like clay. You can change it around. It doesn't have a high, high cost for you to modify that and to, to, to change it. So you need to you need to use the advantage of that medium as much as possible, which lends itself to an evolutionary process to develop software as opposed to a big upfront design. I hope that helps you, Akash. Uh, great question. I think a lot of people have, have asked about this in the past. If you have a question for me, you can email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com. And if you like this video, go ahead and click that big subscribe button below if you haven't already subscribed. If you have, I appreciate you. Stay tuned till next time. Take care.